Thomas Smith was a resident of the village here and he was the inventor of the truck. Um, I've got a photograph of him here actually in his first workshop. There's Mr. Smith at the back there. The trug uh, stretched back to Anglo-Saxon times when it was hewn out of solid timber and called a trog, which is the Anglo-Saxon word for boat shaped. Smith took that old idea, modernised it with a wooden handle and, and a lightweight frame and slatted boards. So this and was the new slim down, lightweight uh, trug for the, uh, the 19th century? It certainly was, yeah. They really did stem from agricultural use. They were used on uh, farms in Sussex and uh, in other places for many years. Um, Reg behind us, he was um, a farmer before he became a trug maker and he used to hang one round his neck and scatter grain in the fields on the Pevensey marshes from it. Go, grab a trug if you can get one behind you and, and run us through the, uh, <coughs> the production method. Right, on the trug you've got um, first of all the handle and the rim which are made from sweet chestnut. Chestnut is a hardwood, so it lasts a long time. We coppice our own chestnut in local woodlands, and that chestnut breed is brought back here, cleaved out uh, with a fro. The fro's um, really like an upside down axe, thin axe, with a handle poking upwards. So you hold the handle, uh, put the fro on top of the wood, and then hit it with a mallet to um, split it down. Because chestnut splits very well, it's one of the reasons why it was used, apart from its local availability. And then they come in for Reg or the other guys to um, shave, like he, he's doing behind me now. Once that's been shaved, that's taken out into the steam shop, steamed, and then bent round formers. Mm -hmm. The handle we make in one piece. Um, some of the rims we make in one piece, but generally speaking, we make them in two, with two pieces, which are now together with copper tacks. And what, what are the, the, the innards made of? The boards are made from uh, cricket bat willow. Each trug is slightly different to its neighbour and uh, each board is adjusted for size by the craftsman with his stock knife when he's putting them in. That thing looks very, very, very sharp, Reg. Yeah, it is very sharp. What's it called? A draw knife. A draw knife? Yep. I've got a photo down here, uh, going back a bit. Which one of those? Are you in there? The good-looking one, there. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the dark-haired bloke. That's right. Yeah. Who are the others? Can you remember them? Well, Mr. Summerfield Vic, he's dead. That's me. That's Raymond Smith. He was related to Mr. Smith. He used to own this. But right. I don't ask who, what relation. So he was another relation he of the original relation, Thomas that's Smith. Right. And right. this is Tony, the deaf and dumb bloke used to be here, but he's retired. And, and the building looks exactly the same as it is now. Yeah, it, nothing alters, it's just the same. Nothing ever changes it? No. Trug sales have got a good future. We have done an estimate of the world potential for trugs and we reckon it's somewhere in the region of about four and a half million pounds per annum. But we're not going to aspire to that. We'd rather keep to our 10 uh, to 14,000 trugs a year and make them in the craftsman way. Mm -hmm.